Hi, this is Rolf Versluis with EdCap Network Systems. I want to talk about a new router that Cisco's come out with, the Integrated Services Router 4000 series. This is a big deal. Uh, it's as big as when Cisco came out with the original Intelligent Services Router, the 2800 and the 3800 series, about 10 years ago. Now, I remember back then, the, we were using the 2600 and 3600 series router, and it was getting a little long in the tooth. There was a lot of other things that we needed doing, and we weren't just able to, to get that done. But when, when the original ISR came out, we're like, oh, this is awesome. It's a fast router. It can do voice. It can do security. It can do all sorts of other things. And it's kind of the same way with the ISR 4000 now. And so it's a series of routers. They've just been announced. And every new design that we're doing with branch offices is now including 4000 series routers instead of the 2900 or 3900 series ISR routers that we've been using. So let me tell you a little bit about these and uh, why they're important and why they're an, a really good evolution of the existing uh, ISR series. Uh, so first off, we do a lot of different things with our customers when we uh, do the wide area network deployments. So first of all, we do the wide area network for data. That's important. Um, we also typically do voice, so we have these acting as voice gateways um, for either SIP trunking or for uh, T1s, voice T1s, or analog ports. Uh, so that's important. Um, and then security. Uh, security is also really important. Now, as you'd expect, the 4000 series is faster and it's more flexible. Uh, but it's also built on an entirely different, uh, different way. So it's using the new, uh, instead of iOS, the Cisco Internetwork Operating System, it's using the iOS XE, which is uh, Cisco's been using on the high-end router. But basically, this lets the Cisco iOS take advantage of multi-core processors, of high-speed multi-core processors. And, what, and it, it works in a virtualized environment. So it lets you run lots of, not, well, let Cisco run, so virtual um, uh, applications on it. So for example, the control and the data plane are split out. So if the uh, data plane gets really busy and a lot of things get sent uh, across it, the control plane's not going to be affected. This is really good. Okay? Then there's other things that we can add on to it. One of the options that you can add on to the ISR 4000 right now um, is Cisco Wide Area uh, Application Acceleration. So this is uh, caching over the Wide Area Network. Um, it's useful in some situations, and instead of having to add it as a separate module, uh, it's just run as a virtual machine inside the router. And these are fast internal connections, and the plans that Cisco has for adding additional virtual machine capabilities are coming out of the rest of the Cisco network portfolio. So, I don't know what they're planning on adding, but I can imagine that they would want to have a really good firewall um, and be able to do other types of things with uh, software-defined networking, uh, maybe uh, wireless controllers, all sorts of different applications that can be added in the future. So it has a lot of uh, expandability. Um, there's a few different sizes of these routers, and uh, let's talk about the different sizes that, that you want. What want and they're kind of direct replacements of the 2900 and 3900 series ISRs, uh, but they have and they have different um, uh, modules and different types of things that, that you're going to want. But one of the big things that I think that you're going to want because it saves you money and it um, does much faster connectivity to your branch offices is to use the Cisco Intelligent WAN. Now, Cisco Intelligent WAN, it's pretty neat uh, because the big picture is you're able to get uh, at your branch offices instead of having, for example, an MPLS WAN exclusively as your connection to the branch offices, you can also add um, business DSL, business cable, and 4G from one or more internet providers. And what the Intelligent WAN does is use all of these at the same time and do performance routing. And performance routing is a little bit processor capable. Uh, performance routing or, uh, it uses the, uh, the, the, the 
full capabilities of the processor, and it'll split the paths of the data from the wide area network over these different paths to make maximum use of them. Um, and furthermore, it can use network-based application recognition, another existing technology, as well as the all these different paths. These are secure, so this is actually dynamic multipoint VPN uh, that's used. This all starts to get pretty complex, uh, and it starts to get to be a load on the router, but the Cisco 4000 series router can handle the load. And we'll talk a little bit about uh, that in a minute. But the part that I like um, is that it brings in software-defined networking. Because as you add these capabilities and features and applications, uh, specifically uh, the intelligent WAN, but also other things, you want to be able to control these centrally in a nice uh, graphical user environment. So another thing that's important about these is that there's a, a, a couple different companies that have software uh, that are not Cisco companies that are using the open architecture of Cisco's uh, software-defined networking. Uh, one of them is called Live Action, and the other is called Glue Networks. And they have uh, great applications that interface with the IOM system, uh, as well as the routers, to allow you to set policy and monitor the, the actions of them. Of course, these are also available on the Cisco price list for our, our public sector customers. Um, but we'll hear more about that. So, uh, on to the specifics of the 4000 series routers. There's one of them that's actually been out for a little while now, uh, and that's the top end one. Um, but let's talk about, first there's the 4321, there's the 4331, the 4351, and then in the 4400 series, uh, there's the 4431 and the 40. Uh, 451. Now let's talk, and these are the only routers uh, that we have in the 4000 series, and these are flexible enough uh, to be able to suit pretty much all purposes out there. And they've got some differences. Um, for a lot of our customers that have maybe, I don't know, 20, 30, 40, 50 people at their branches, they're probably going to end up wanting to look at the 4331 uh, as, as the primary go to router. Um, so they have throughput differences, and the throughput differences are, are actually uh, licensable. So you can buy it at the smaller throughput, and then if you end up adding more wide area network connectivity speed uh, or, or uh, multiple paths, then you can uh, increase the license. So first of all, the, the throughput in, in uh, 4321 starts out at 50 megabit per second. And these are fully loaded, everything running through it, everything, you know, all the uh, rules and everything going. This is true throughput. This isn't, you know, uh, spec, and it can be go up to 100 megabits per second. So that's acceptable. Um, this is actually smaller than one rack unit. It's, it's one rack unit high, but it's uh, even narrower. Uh, this is a one RU box. Uh, this is a one rack unit box. This is a two rack unit box. This is a one rack unit box. Uh, and this is a two rack unit box. And as, as we go through and talk about some of the, the differences uh, for things that they can do, uh, you'll see why. Um, this one, the 4331, starts out at 100 and can go up to 300 megabits per second. Um, the 4351 uh, comes in at 200, can go up to 400 megabits per second. Uh, and this one starts at 500 meg and can go, up, can go up to one gig total throughput. And this one starts at one gig and can go up to two gig total throughput. That's a lot of wide area network. Uh, so, but as you can see, these, these are designed to hook into internet and, and wide area network circuits. If we're talking about um, a, a campus with a fiber environment, we really want to be more in a, a switched uh, environment, not, not a, a routed environment like this. Um, so power supplies. Uh, in the 4400 series, they have dual internal power supplies, um, and all the rest of them have single. And in the Cisco uh, IWAN architecture, it, it, it is very reliable because if you have MPLS and you have one or two uh, or three different connections to the internet with the ability to switch over those on the fly, whichever one's more reliable, um, your, your hardware ends up becoming the, the limiting factor and reliability, and within the IWAN setup, you can actually have two routers if you want to, uh, and they can do uh, the standard you know, Cisco uh, multi-routing uh, paths and, and get to a high level of reliability. So uh, 
I guess what I'm saying is if you want to get to a high level of reliability with these classes of routers, you buy multiple routers as opposed to dual power supplies. Um, it's a, there's a, uh, for the interfaces on here, we have uh, NIM slots, so network interface module slots, uh, and they have, uh, gosh, I forget exactly how many on, on the network interface module slots. Oh, um, so we've got two of them on this router, two of them on this router, three, three, and three. And these are the different cards that you would put in for analog ports or T1 ports or, or things like this. Uh, and they can, go, uh, they can go up to gigabit speed. Then uh, we've also got the service modules. And the service modules, uh, there's none in this one and there's none in this. Uh, and you can have a single wide in here or a dual wide or a dual wide on here. What the service modules lets you do is, well, you could put a, a little switch module in there uh, or you can put in actually a full up server. Uh, that's integrated at high speed into the rest of the router. You might want this um, because uh, to add some of Cisco's applications you can put right now, you could put a wireless controller on it, you could put a source fire intrusion prevention system, or things like that. Uh, I like it for the idea of adding additional interfaces though. Okay, so these do voice, um, and uh, none of the modules or anything from the older routers uh, work in here. So, um, but everything is a lot more powerful. So for the packet voice digital signal processor modules, this is running on version 4, uh, and we can do one in each of these. Uh, these, are, these are just really uh, powerful modules. Um, and you know, that kind of rounds out the capabilities. Basically, they're coming out right now. Um, they're very capable, and they're going to have added uh, things that can be done with them in the future. So. One of the biggest things, again, like I've talked about, is the Intelligent WAN. That's an important part of it. Um, the Intelligent WAN was actually introduced uh, in the 29 and 3900 series routers. So if you have the 29 or 3900 series routers, you don't really need to look at replacing them. Um, because they're very powerful. They're the Generation 2 integrated services routers. You might want to consider it uh, you know, a year or two down the, the road if you start hitting any type of performance limits or capability limits or if you're going to be doing um, a lot of video conferencing and, and, and run, you're running out of uh, PDM modules on the, on the 2900 or 3900 series routers. But if you have 2800 series routers, um, or if you have the 3800 series routers, you're going to definitely want to plan for upgrading these. Uh, Cisco has already uh, announced end of support dates on the 2800 and 3800 series routers. Uh, it's not possible to buy support on them anymore. You're going to want to be planning to upgrade these. And you should skip right over the 29 and 3900 series routers and go uh, look at going to the uh, 4300 or 4400 series routers. Uh, we've looked at the pricing on these. It's good. It's very comparable to the 29 and 3900 series routers. This is really the direction that Cisco is going in the future. So right now, it's coming out with a great set of capabilities, and it's got the ability to add lots of different um, uh, applications and other things like that in the future. So. Um, Talk to, talk to your salesperson, talk to uh, one of the engineers, let's talk through some of the specifics of these and uh, let's talk about how we can make intelligent WAN uh, work in your environment. And like in a lot of cases, we don't have to just bring in intelligent WAN in one fell swoop. Uh, we look at the sites that have the, the most need uh, for being able to uh, have faster connection to the wide area network and look at bringing in business class DSL or, or cable and then changing the routing to that one site. Uh, and, and putting the whole system in place, doing kind of a pilot, and then as we see success, rolling out from, from there. So we'd love to do that with you, and uh, make sure if you're going to be looking at getting new integrated services routers, that you look at getting the 4400 or 4300 series routers. Again, this is Rolf for SLUS, ICAP Network Systems. Thank you very much.